Theories on Behavior in Groups, Group Dynamics Application of Tuckman Theory in a Newly Formed Multidisciplinary Child Protection Team According to Catry and Tuckman, team building model tackles how a group works on a given project from its existence until it concludes the task. Initially, the theory comprised four stages. However, Tuckman incorporated the fifth phase to address the final stages of a project. The initial stage is known as forming, which entails the team assembled and informed about the project. Here, the team bonds to eliminate any autonomy. Forming is succeeded by storming where a group begins by sharing ideas on how the project can be handled. Since most team members may seek to have dominant ideas, it may cause many disagreements. If the team survives the storming phase, it enters the norming stage where it develops team values while recognizing the contribution of each member. The fourth stage involves performing where the members have rich comprehension of the values of the team and the role that each person is to play to complete the task. The existing camaraderie, unity, and proper communication help the team to work on the project. Ultimately, the members get to the transforming stage whereby the proper functioning of the team helps it to respond to any modifications. Likewise, a multidisciplinary child protection team made up of social workers, health visitors, and police will go through similar stages. First, the members begin by bonding after being informed of their tasks. Secondly, conflicts are bound to arise as ideas seek ascendancy. If the members overcome the storming stage, they will form the values that drive the team towards protecting children and or ensuring that every person understands his or her role. The group will then begin working on the roles towards accomplishing the objective of the goal due to the existing team spirit and proper communication. Eventually, the multidisciplinary team will respond to changes that may arise as they strive to meet the objective. Application of McClellan's Theory McClellan's theory provides important lessons that can help a team leader to encourage and or direct his or her team efficiently. David McClellan's hypothesis holds that three motivators are present in every human being, namely achievement, association, and power. McClellan further noted that there is always an overriding motivator in every individual. Those who have the power as the principal motivators are further put into individual and institutional categories. While individual power motivation seeks to govern others, institutional power aims at cooperating with others to accomplish the objective of the team. In the context of a mental support group that needs to raise funds, there is a need for the members to identify the dominant motivators in each member. The individual with the institutional power as the principal drive should be appointed as the leader to guide others during the fundraising. The team leader should then utilize a leadership style that will accommodate the features of different motivators. For instance, individuals with achievement as the leading drive should be given a challenging amount to raise. They should also be given a fair and sensible appraisal for their efforts. Those with the association as the prime drive should be given less risky tasks and personal feedback on their input during the fundraising. Eventually, the members inspired by the authority should be allocated goal-oriented responsibilities, as they desire to accomplish and control situations. Application of Belbin's Theory According to Dyer, Dyer, and Dyer, Belbin's team role theory asserts that there is a need for a team to have different types of individuals for it to be fruitful. According to Belbin, a team should have a coordinator, an implementer, a shaper, one who introduces new concepts, and a resource investigator. Besides, the presence of the nine members is crucial since they all have a distinctive input to the team. However, Belbin also advocates that a team should have a maximum of six members since some of the roles can be fused. As such, the team of social workers who desire to include a new member in their team should determine the type of role that is not satisfied in the team and recruit an individual who blends naturally to a given role. Nonetheless, if the team believes that some members can perform a given task as a secondary role, then there will be no need for hiring a new member, especially because the existing members have worked successfully for several years. This claim implies that they already have members who can perform the various team roles. Importance of setting clear objectives and agreeing on goals 
the success of the project in terms of developing community-based outreach services for individuals with mental health problems is highly influenced by the presence of clear objectives and agreed goals. Objectives and mutual goals unite and drive the team, even when the members face destructive challenges and conflicts. As a leader, one should strive to ensure that team members are conversant with the objectives of the project to boost output. Where the objectives are unclear, the inertia among some team members eventually forces the leader and some active members to work on every task. Paying attention to the individual development of your team members. Individual development entails promoting the well-being, career, as well as habits of team members. A team is only as strong as its shakiest link. Consider Maslow's theory, which puts self-actualization at the zenith of the hierarchy of needs pyramid. When team members realize that their leader is willing to help them become what they desire, it results in some fundamental merits. Individual development not only ensures that team members accomplish their personal goals but also improves their productivity. Moreover, it encourages loyalty and dedication to the team. Such characteristics are crucial for a team of social workers that are assisting patients with mental problems. The social workers will always ensure the ascendancy of the patient's needs and suggest ideas that promote the delivery of quality care. Paying attention to task and maintenance activities. Douglas McGregor observed that for a team to operate effectively, some criteria have to be adopted, including task and maintenance. Task processes involve the means through which a team intends to do a project. Equally, maintenance activities entail the mechanisms that a team utilizes to keep itself used while working on a mission. Paying attention to tasks and maintenance helps team members to comprehend the objectives of the team such that they can use their skills to develop community-based services to assist individuals with mental challenges. Furthermore, it promotes proper communication among team members while keeping themselves motivated towards accomplishing the goals of the group.